Hi everybody, this is Dr. Doug. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. We're here going to do part two of what is the meaning of queer. In part one, we talked a little bit about more of the metaphysical ideas of how queer both honors our differences in our community, but provides a unifying force, let's even call it perhaps a spiritualizing force. And in part two, I would like to talk to you a little bit about some brief history. Now, first of all, the use of the word queer back in maybe the 50s was definitely derogatory. People didn't like it. But more and more and more, folks started to be a little bit using the word in a reclamation kind of way. You know, sometimes the way um, a gay person might call themselves a queen or uh, a faggot. But in this way, how to take back from the homophobic society words used against us and to use them in an empowering way. This was really, really interesting. It also came around the time of the rise of gay and lesbian studies, which did so much to foster interest and illumination about our history, our legacy, our psychology, but there were some problems because gay and lesbian studies didn't really account for the diversity and variability in our community. And also, what about those people who didn't fit into a stable identity category. I, homosexual, bisexual, transgender, lesbian, those are fixed identity categories. But what about people who, let's say, don't identify, but who love having sex with different uh, genders? Let's say those people who are fluid. Let's say those people who are cross-dressers or who are in the process of transitioning and are still deciding on how that's going to happen. What word basically helps them? There are lots of different words that people could use, but a fixed label is not necessarily the word that is most representative and the most empathic for that individual. When I started the LGBT specialization in clinical psychology, that was a period of time in 2005 when LGBT people were just coming up and we wanted to really honor lesbian identity, gay identity, bi identity, trans identity. We weren't thinking that much about queer at that point. We wanted to help those identities come to the fore. In the years since then, though, I would have definitely made it the LGBTQ specialization because Q is really a unifying term that bridges some of the gaps and allows for those people who don't go by a fixed identity. We have to open our hearts to them too. What queer does do is it also allows us to account for ways in which uh, capitalist society has also taken over some aspects of our community. And we really want to interrogate and question some of those. In that way, queer could be useful as a term for anti-colonialism. Anti-colonialism is a big word, but it really means that when all of the Europeans came to this country, many of them were uh, destroying the native populations and were actually bringing Africans over as slaves. So there's this sense that North American European values are also exploitative of the land, of indigenous people, and of people of color. So queering Eurocentrism, queering our theory helps us to question the ways in which we have also become capitalist, exploitative, and colonial. And it's useful to then allow queer to do what it needed to do, um, which is to embrace the BIPOC community, black people, indigenous people, people of color. So it is a way to inflect and question the dominance of whiteness, let's say, in what used to be called the LGBT community and make sure we're being much more inclusive, much less colonial, and much more aware of our brothers and sisters who are oppressed, who are of color, and have so much richness and different indigenous values to offer the queer community. So queerness can become equated with indigenousness and a deep inherent value in each of us that gets us to the earth and to our roots. That's all for part two for today. If you liked what I said, please don't forget to smash that like button. Please subscribe. If you have any questions, please ask them of me in the comments section. I'd love to hear from you. 
You are so very welcome here. Stay tuned for part three on the nature and the use of the word queer. Bye for now. So weird. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> You're like, again. queer. That's all for now. <laughs> uh, one word set, one word set, one word set. That's all today for part two of the video. If you like what I had to say, don't forget to smash that like button. Please subscribe. Please um, answer. <laughs> I, I get it. I'm almost there. I was there. I was there. On the top. On the top. Take a turn. That's all for part two today. If you like what I had to say, don't forget to smash that like button. Please subscribe. Ask me any questions you have in the comments section. I'd love to hear from you. Stay tuned for part three on the video of the nature of queer. It's so great to have you here. If you have any questions, don't, for, don't forget to ask Dr. Doug. See you next time.